All right, hey guys, we're here at 619 Muscle in the gym, San Diego, in beautiful 619, San Diego, California. I'm here with my man, Fetty Mo, Stan Morrison, IFBB Pro, um, elite level uh, competitor, good friend of mine. He's also a personal trainer and a coach himself. He's got a team, Undeniable Physiques, that works alongside us here at 619 Muscle. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit was um, the, uh, the relationship that we've had. And it, it started out actually on kind of shaky ground. And, I don't mind confessing, you know, Fetty Moe's a crazy athlete and he's been an athlete his whole life. And uh, he had hit me up in an email uh, sometime two and a half years ago, yeah. about that. About two and a half. Yeah, it was like, hey, Coach Pete, I've been following you at the shows, I would like to work with you. And I responded back, maybe the first time, but then somehow it got lost in emails and he kept sending me emails and I kept saying, oh yeah, I'll get together with you. But, you know, unfortunately for me, I didn't respond until one time, I think you had sent me an email and I said, uh, finally, after like two months, you're like, hey, listen, man, I'm very serious about this sport. I need some guidance. I'm a hardworking athlete and I know I can do some damage. If you keep blowing me off, it means you're not interested in me. And I wasn't blowing him off. It was just for some reason, I kept missing these emails. And, you know, lucky for me, I said, damn, I don't mean to be blowing you off. And I said, oh, shit, come on in, man. I'm really sorry. He came in and took off his shirt and I was like, good Lord, it's a good thing I didn't pass up on those emails after all. Right. I mean, you have been training for about 10, 10, 12 years, very seriously on your own. Yeah, and, uh, been training since I was a kid, actually. It was probably a little longer than that. And you're, 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 you've been an athlete your whole life, but primarily when you were in high school and stuff, it, you were really good at football was your main sport? Yeah, football, mm -hmm. track. But, you know, for me, one of the things I think that was advantageous to me was you know, uh, Mo came to us already having had really a lot of experience with training as an athlete, but a real intuition for his own body, how his body works, his appetite, his, how his body handled food. He was already a student of the sport. So, you know, it was a real good fit for me because when we started talking about stuff, he had all of the language. We spoke really the same language in terms of, you know, the science of uh, nutrition and, and training and how the body responds. So. For me, it really was almost a no-brainer being able to adjust initially the different macros and the, and the, the components of his training program um, uh, to be able to see his body change like amazing. And you know, the other thing I think that was a, as a compliment to, to you is his work ethic is insane. You know, when we first started training together, I was uh, taking him through some of the workouts that I bring some of our other guys through. And you know, we'll confess, I think all the guys on the team train hard, but. Uh, Man, I couldn't break this guy. And it was crazy because it, it's not that our goal is, as a, as a trainer or a coach is to kill the athlete, but it's to stimulate the most response. But his body was so in tune and he was so solid with his work ethic that he knew his limits and was able to actually fine tune. One of the neat things that I like is whether we put lightweight on the bar or we put heavyweight on the bar, one of the things that I appreciate is the fact that you will always make it harder, not easier. So if it's lightweight, we put on the bar, he squeezes harder and gets the most out of every single rep. So all of our training sessions are super productive. Um, but one of our earlier videos that we had actually, uh, we were doing a back training session. And I remember in the course of the video, if you guys watch it on our 619 Muscle TV channel, um, as we were training, if you remember, there was a look on his face like he wanted to shoot me when I asked him to do another set or something like that because it was, it, was a, it was a tough one we were going it through. It was very painful. I, I, it's funny because a lot of us, you know, we think we train hard, you know, we, we do things on our own and, 
until we get into someone else's hands that's been doing it for a while and been training other people, you realize that your training wasn't as hard as you thought it was. And when I went through one of his training sessions, it just blew my mind how like you know he'll tell me, oh, this is a light set, and a light set to 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 him. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna say to him, but a, a real light set really isn't as light as it should be. You know, if you finish in a set and of ten reps and it's easy to get to that ten reps, it really wasn't a you know a light set. A light set usually is a little heavier. But the thing was that every single set was much harder and hard. It never got easier. And every time he told me to keep going, even till this day, you know, coming up in here uh, to train with Pete, I'm always like, hey, I get out of the car like, fuck, <laughs> I, I got to train again with my coach. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's never easy. It never gets any easier. Yeah, so I appreciate that, I, uh, honestly. Well, and I think that's the fun of it. And that's what makes our relationship so productive, but also so fun. Because, you know, he might think that he's coming into the gym when we're going to go through a training session and he's got the, you know, that the butterflies in the stomach kind of thing and that little queasiness. Because I get that too when I train. Um, but, you know, he don't realize that I'm sitting at my desk and I'm taking my pre-workout stimulant and I'm getting my mind focused and my mind right because this guy is one of the hardest training athletes I've ever met and I've ever dealt with. So I get anxious knowing I have to take him to levels that many people can't put up with anyway. So there's a lot of pressure on me to, to, to perform as well. So it's a real fun thing. If you watch any of the videos, we've done several of them on our YouTube channel and it's, it's amazing to watch because there's a cool synergy and a cool partnership between coach and athlete when I'm like, I turn around and say, fuck, I can't break this guy. He just doesn't stop. And you know, we put him through supersets and drop sets and giant sets and all kinds of things. But the greatest thing is like, like your body, if you watch the course, you know, follow his, his Instagram and, and follow the course of the progress of the way his body has changed in response to the training and the nutrition. It's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's superhuman. I mean, the training program I think is effective and the nutrition is solid, but um, the ability for you to be able to tune into the different pieces of the body that we're targeting is, is pretty impressive. It's, it's, it's something that's really special. And I think that's a big part of what makes you among the soon to be very elite level athletes in the sport. And we're really excited. We had an amazing season this year, which we had a lot of rest time to put on some extra muscle. I think we put on maybe six or seven pounds. Yeah, built up a thicker back and, and from the Arnold until this past show, the Titans. Now, this was the second time you did the Titans. The Titans last year was your pro debut. Actually, it was. Or, was it two years ago? It was two years ago. And you took second. Yeah. And then you followed up that second place with a win at the Frigno Legacy back then. Yep. A Frigno Legacy was the name of that Frigno. one? Frigno. Yep. And uh, that was pretty cool. That was second pro show and uh, made it to the Olympia that first year. And then you went on to Arnold Classic first time took seventh which is pretty amazing for Arnold Classic uh, in Columbus debut and a first year pro yeah yep and then this year um, did the Arnold again took seventh again which is which is super impressive considering the lineup it was a pretty stacked show this year and then we took some time off rested you you came back and and you won the Titans last weekend which which is badass yeah um so now we qualify for the Olympia but uh you're not done yet we got less less than two weeks yeah, I got less than two weeks for the um, uh, the legions, legions in Long Beach, less than two weeks, and uh, depending on what happens at that show, it will determine what I would, what I'm gonna pretty much do. I haven't really even talked to Pete about wh what my plan is to see what he think, but uh, pretty much what happens at legions is gonna determine my idea of what's gonna happen for my uh, season up to the Olympia. Who was it, Sergio Oliva, that was giving you? crap about uh, eating chicken breast in the off season yeah Sergio asked me he came in there and he was like did you eat chicken in off season and I was like you're supposed to it's growing food you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? you're supposed to be eating chicken all the time this is your sport if this is your thing you know yeah one of the cool things that I think is pretty unique about um, working with Mo is his approach to the sport as an athlete and then we have a lot of uh, people here who um I have this certain perception, a couple specific guys who I, I remember there was actually a heated discussion, actually in one of the other videos we had where uh, one of the other pros in our family was talking about he had qualified for the Olympia. So he just stopped everything, no competing, no, it just trained focus on that Olympia because the Olympia in our sport is the Super Bowl. But Fetty, we were sitting at lunch in that, in that diner one time talking about it and you guys got into a pretty heated discussion about the fact that 
How did you put it, Mo? You said, uh, well, the way I look at it, you know, there has to be some prestigious show to say this is the greatest person in the world. But I believe that if that's the only show that you're doing, how do you tell me if the guy that's winning multiple shows is not better than you? You know what I'm saying? Like if you're completely healthy, that's just like if the Cleveland Browns, you know, never they never uh, uh, played a game in in a, in, a, in their season or in the playoffs and they just went straight to the Super Bowl. They might end up beating the Patriots because they're completely healthy and they had plenty of time to rest. They had plenty of time to practice, plenty of time to do everything they need to do while the other teams was banging and clanging until they got there. But what I believe is the guys who's out there banging and with with a lot of stats are better. You know what I'm saying? And that, I, I, I truly believe that, you know, if a ton of wins is a is a better person, you know what I'm saying? Rather than just waiting until one show to say, yeah, I keep winning this show, or I just keep winning the classic uh, Arnold Classic, or I just keep winning the Grand uh, the Grand Prix Titans, you know? So, yeah, it was a pretty heated. Uh, it was a heated discussion we had, a, and I think the big debate was really in our sport, which I really appreciate from Fetty's perspective because he says, you know what? I'm an athlete. Athletes compete. Athletes play the game that they compete in. And, you know, just because we're bodybuilding and in bodybuilding, you know, you, you typically set a goal, you work towards that goal and you eliminate all stress and all variables trying to focus on that goal. That doesn't necessarily mean you don't put your stuff out there and challenge yourself. And, you know, Mo's approach to this sport, because he's always on his game, he's always on point, is approaching the sport as an athlete. And I think that's kind of a, a, a really neat perspective. And it's no disrespect to the people that focus just on the Olympia once they qualify. But it's also much more challenging to put yourself out there on a regular basis. Take the fights on. Take the challenges on. And, you know, be the athlete. Play the game. So right. it's kind of neat. I think you guys follow Mo. Uh, you're going to appreciate his, his mindset, his work ethic, his approach to the sport much more the more you get to know him. I certainly do. I have a ton of respect for this guy because he inspires me. And... Um, um, I've worked hard in the sport, and for me, it, I'm impressed by a lot of people. I'm inspired by very few. And uh, Fetty definitely inspires me by the, the way he's dedicated to his craft and his sport. And I'm very excited to see what's going to happen in the next year, the next season, uh, the next show, which is a week and a half away. It's going to be fun. It is. It is. It's going to be good. So, you guys, follow Fetty Mo. Follow our 609 Muscle TV series. I hope you enjoy this training video that you're going to see. We just put him, uh, Antonio Roseboro, and Jared through um, a pretty solid end of the prep uh, back training program. And if you guys want to see anything else, be sure to hit us up and, and let us know. We'll bring it to you because we're here to keep rocking and rolling. It's going to be fun. Yo, hurts so good. Yo, pain, it's just so painful, it makes you laugh. Oh, it's yeah, crazy how that works.